Hello. Good afternoon and welcome to the second annual Creston Unlimited Pitch My Startup Session. No, no, it says raucous applause, raucous applause. Um, I'm Adam Knight. I'm a planning director here at TMW Unlimited. I'm so pleased to be able to welcome you to today's session. Um, I'm very passionate about agency innovation. Those of you who know of me will know that. Um, I'm a sort of a signed up member to TMW Labs and um, even much so that I kind of spent my weekend recently building the work services for them there. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, hope you've had some time at the Tech Expo downstairs. And you've seen the highlights such as pouring yourself a pint with brainwaves, quite exciting. Um, downloading the hunting of the haunting of bag of bones. You've all absolutely done that, and it's all rose to the top of the, um, the iPad book chart, of course. And you've fed the AR elephant, and that's not a euphemism. Um, so in the next 40 minutes, you're going to be presented by four fantastic startups. Um, we'll give them seven minutes each to present their wares. Then there's about three minutes to ask any questions you've got, and then we'll head on to the next one. After that, um, there's a few drinks and nibbles, and then to the exciting influence session afterwards, which will kick off about six o'clock, where we answer, will technology answer or solve the problems that technology creates? So a really interesting challenge. So the four startups you'll see um, in the next kind of 40 minutes, you'll have Gideon Lars talking to you from Biopower, whose uh, main uh, focus is turbo, as a turbocharging twist on member get member software. Um, you'll have uh, Martin Verbrain from Locals, uh, which is a piece of location tech that drives retail decisioning and optimization. Fantastic. And um, you'll have Naomi Poiser from Greenseed, which is an app to connect green-fingered locals together. Beautiful. And um, Tom Neal, lastly, uh, from Landmark, will talk to you about his piece of technology, which geotags real-world places with digital content, which is massively useful for, for brands. You'll get chances to ask them all questions afterwards. But for now, open over to the first uh, session, which is uh, Gideon from Biopower. Over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can I have a clicker or something? Good afternoon. My name is Gideon. I'm the founder of Biopower. Um, while we're sorting out the slides, we're a client of Nelson Bostock, which means you've probably all heard of us before, right? Because their PR is so good. Who, who have we got from Nelson Bostock today? A couple of you. Uh, it's very nice to, to see everybody. We've been working with Nelson Bostock for about three years, four years, which is about as long as we've been going. Uh, we used to come to your old offices in Whiteley's, and it's much nicer here, so thank you for hosting us. Um, so, yeah, Gideon Lask, founder and CEO of Biopower. We are obsessed with all things technology, retail, and word-of-mouth marketing. I founded this company about four years ago. Uh, the idea came from uh, my last job at Universal Music. They brought me in to build retail businesses on behalf of each one of their artists, from Gaga to Bieber to The Stones. And we were selling memorabilia and merchandise and experiences to fans, something I thought was going to be easy, but actually wasn't, because as soon as you put a buy button on stuff, it killed that fan-artist relationship dead. So we needed to develop a brand new way of selling that made, that artist, that made the fan feel like they were being consulted like the fans being, acting as a community, like singling out the super fan for their actions. And when we cracked the code, when we developed this brand new way of selling, something very good happened. We weren't just selling this memorabilia and merchandise and experiences to the super fan, but the super fan was going out and recruiting their friends and their family and their work colleagues to shop too. And I realized what we'd done is crack for a retailer what was the holy grail of referral marketing, using your existing customers to go out and get you new ones. Far cheaper than PPC, far cheaper than CPA. The economics of acquisition change forever if you can make this stuff work. So Biopower is focused entirely on that, referral marketing. You've probably all done it. You've got your free £10 Uber cab ride. We take that, we turbocharge it, and we plug it into retailer and brands' websites. Why is this important? Well, start of this year, Gartner thought that 3% of new customers were going to be acquired as a result of a referral. That's going to change dramatically over the next 10 years. It's going to go from 3% to 15%. So referral goes from something you can ignore to something you really cannot ignore ever. Why has it changed? Well, two things. A, the fact we now spend 80% of our online time being social, connected via email or text or Twitter or WhatsApp. We're minded to share and refer, so the foundation is in place. And the next thing that's changed is that the tools have finally arrived. 
You agency guys know here, you can never fulfill a marketing or acquisition channel until you've got the right tools. Buyer power's here, there's a few companies in the US, but the tools have now arrived, so it's timely. We're a platform, it means we have a front end and a back end. We'll take a look at the front end in a minute, but it would plug into your website. Acardo's a client, it plugs into Acardo's website. They send their traffic there, they give their traffic a unique sharing URL, you share from it. Customers then come back via the checkout, transact, that triggers the referral. There's a back end where you build these campaigns, you look at the impact of your campaigns. Um, so it's a platform, you know all about platforms. What makes it different, what makes it magic? Well, the secret to successful referral marketing, three things. Tiered rewards, gamification, and communal targets. So a tiered reward. If you want me to refer a friend, you need to give me something, and you need to give me something to give to my friend. If I successfully refer, then give me something bigger. So maybe give me that five pounds of store credit. Then maybe give me 20 pounds if I bring in a second customer, and 50 pounds if I bring in a third customer. Keep me going, fuel that. Secondly, the gamification. So every time you refer, we put you into a leaderboard. We show you how you're doing against your competition. As you do better, you move up the leaderboard. If we look at what one of our, Sky, our clients, Sky, is doing next year, top 20 people in that leaderboard at the end of a month are going to get to meet the cast of Game of Thrones. The top three people will be in an episode of Game of Thrones next year. So very social, very on brand, very talkable. That stretches you, that keeps you going and bringing in customers. Then the third element is communal targets. So the first two are very much for me. It's kind of selfish. Sky will say to their clients or to their customers, hey, if we hit 5,000 new customers this month, you're all going to get 3D TV for Christmas. So again, very on brand, but something we can all benefit in. You weave those three things together, and you successfully get your customers referring. Why do people work with us? Well. Typically, you don't have a scheme, and actually it's far better just to outsource it than try and develop this tech yourself. You would never develop an email CMS or email gun yourself. It's better to use someone else's platform. Or you're like Ocado or like Sky, and you've reached the limits of the in-house tech, and now you want to work with both a professional service and platform, but also the experience that comes with it. The team of 20 that we have back in Farringdon have been doing this for three, four years now. There probably is no one better or more nerdy or geeky about referral marketing. So that's why people come to us. Here's an example of a client and what it looks and feels like. So Clioco Beauty Retailer, this is one of their best customers, Clara. So Clara gets an email saying, hey, we want to grow the Clioco friends and family network. We'll give you five pounds for every friend that you bring in. She's minded to do that, so she clicks through back to the Clioco site, Clioco header, Clioco footer, our stuff in the middle. By entering her email address and her name, she gets given a unique sharing URL and the tools to share it, so she does across mobile and email. Here you can see her sharing with her friends. One particular friend, Leanne, thinks it's a great idea, so she clicks on that WhatsApp message on the URL, and she goes straight back to the Clioco website where she does her shopping. Because we've got a tag on the checkout, we know that that referral happened, and we then trigger some CRM. So we say, hey, Carla, well done. Your friend Leanne just shopped. Here's five pounds worth of store credit. Why don't you click through and see what else you can win? This is where some of the stretch targets comes in. So five pounds for each customer, but then some GHD hair straighteners she, is it, hey, GHD hair straighteners if she brings in enough customers. And then the leaderboard at the bottom there. So right now, she's 187th. But if she progresses up to the top, she's going to get a makeover from the professional stylist at Clioco. So easy to award prizes presented in a very gamified way. Back at Clioco Towers, you can see the impact of this. So this is the CMS. You can build the campaigns. Most importantly, most interestingly, you get a unique view of your customers. So these are the customers. As a retailer, traditionally, I'd define lifetime value by what a customer spends with me over the course of 18 months or three years. Going forward, lifetime value can be defined as what a customer spends, but also the spend that they trigger from their friends and family network. Tesco, who's been a client of ours for two years, have a shopper called Tom Grayson. Tom doesn't spend a lot of money. He's got a club card, so they know he spends 80 quid every year. Bottom CRM pot. But Tom has been hugely influential. Over two years, he's brought in a million pounds worth of customers to buy cases of wine from Tesco. Tesco would not have known that had they not brought together the social data and the e-commerce data that you can do in our back end. Tom's now no longer in that bottom CRM pot. He's in a new one called Referrer. They don't know what to do with him yet, but they know he's got huge potential. What's the impact of this? Well, as well as identifying the Tom Graysons of the world, you get an 80% drop in the cost of acquisition, which is huge because you're not doing CPA. You're not reliant upon PPC. You're using your own store credit to award behaviors. 
So a huge drop in the cost of acquisition. Even better than that, the customers you bring in are more attractive. They spend more money than usual, they'll shop more frequently than usual, and they themselves are more likely to refer. The better customers acquired for less money, and really easy to implement. It's no more than affiliate scheme to implement, a piece of JavaScript to give you the experience that sits under your header and above your footer, and a tag on your checkout so we know when there's been a successful referral. Half a day's work at max. We license the technology, it's a license model, a flat monthly fee for a course of a year. We target very much enterprise clients. We work with EE, O2, uh, L'Oreal, Sony, Universal, Warner, Tesco, Ocado. They're our focus. These are people who have performance marketing teams or CRM teams. They're our targets. This stuff works. And as Gartner said, it's going to grow from 3 to 15% of the mix. You can ignore it today. This time next year, you shouldn't be ignoring it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gideon. Um, I'd like to open the floor. We've got a few minutes for questions. Anyone want to go first? I have one pre-prepared if we don't. Come on. Okay, well, thank you. It's because Funny Nelson, Nelson I. Bostock have done their PR so well. And you've answered, knows about it. you've answered all their questions. Um, so my question is, um, which sectors does this tend to work best in and which maybe not necessarily not so well? It doesn't work where there's no passion for a product. So basically what we're doing is that pub conversation where you talk about a, a bottle of wine or a new camera lens or a golf club or a bike. And we amplify that conversation well beyond the walls of the pub and turn it from just being chatter into a transaction. Um, we've had one client that didn't work so well who sold sofas. If you can talk about it in a pub, it works. If you wouldn't talk about it in a pub, less so. Nice shortcut. Any further questions? There's one in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. So L'Oreal is a great example. Don't really have direct to consumer themselves. A little bit they play at it, but we'll be working with retail partners to deliver that. Any further questions? It's great. With my re with my retailer hat on, the, 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 with my retailer hat on, we loved brands because they had these amazing databases of consumers who were really brand loyalists and really into the brand. And yet we, as a retailer, just had a large database of shoppers. It's a really elegant way of working together because if you can just target those real brand loyalists, it's good for everybody. So I'd like to talk some more about it if it's relevant. One at the back, Chris Piss. It was really good. <laughs> it was the best bit. It's a, it's a license model, a technology play, starts from £1,000 per month for a 12-month deal. The more referrals you do, then you move up pricing tiers. Um, average client's probably paying about £3,000 a month. To, today, they're all ultimately direct relationships with uh, retailers or brands. We've had the cases of some introductions via agencies, but typically it's an introduction rather than selling through them. My pleasure. Any further questions? Okay, so uh, Gideon Lask from Biopower, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, on to the second Pitch My Startup pitch. Um, we welcome Martin Verbre from Locals um, to the front to introduce his startup. Thank you very much. Well done for the pronunciation of my name. Fantastic. Um, hope everything is working. Uh, no, you're all the way to the back. Oh, Can you just go all the way to the back? I blame the technical support. All right, perfect. Uh, so I was wondering how I'm going to do seven minutes like a pitch, because normally it's three minutes, so, uh, so thanks for, uh, for that one. Uh, so my name is Martijn uh, Fabre. I run Locals here for, uh, for Europe. Uh, we're probably mostly famous for winning the John Lewis incubator last year called JLab. So that's something that we won, and I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about that as well, actually. Um, this is where we're from. Does anyone recognize this city? No one recognizes this city. Albert Park Circuit in the front. 
Formula One, Melbourne. Yes, we are all from Melbourne, although you can't really tell by my non-Aussie accent, uh, but Melbourne's actually where we founded our company about two years ago, and that's where we all met. And uh, back then we were all working with National Australia Bank, which is one of the big evil banks in, uh, in Australia. Uh, our sole task was making um, the green screen technology mobile, uh, because uh, mobile is, is literally eating the world at the moment. Um, we're absolutely, this is really annoying. <laughs> We're absolutely addicted to our mobile phones. Uh, we probably play with them at the moment, or we want to play with them at the moment. And uh, uh, 1.4 million, or sorry, billion of these devices have been shipped. And as part of National Australia Bank, we were looking into put more thing, stuff in, into the into the apps on, on, on your phone. And um, I guess one of the key things we run into is really about security. So we started to look at, okay, how do how can we have a bit more assurance when people are putting payments through about um, where they are in the real world? Uh, because when you know what someone is, you, you actually have a bit uh, less risk that uh, a transaction is fraudulent. So our big eureka moment was actually, um, why don't we use the, the sensors on the phone to determine someone's position and then actually allow transactions to flow through a bit smoother uh, than anything else. So we started looking into things like iBeacons, um, uh, geofences, NFC, QR, the lot basically. And uh, uh, we realized quickly that actually, if you want to scale this to an enterprise world, you need a platform that allows you to do that and actually can abstract the management of locations completely from the tech that is doing it. So rather than actually managing uh, Wi-Fi, uh, NFC, or geofences, uh, we want to have a platform that makes it a lot easy to, easier to do and you don't have to change the app every time you make a change to it. Uh, and that's how Locals was born. And that's when we all quit our jobs and started doing some real cool stuff with that stuff. Um, what everybody is asking first about when they start looking into location technology is actually, can you do ads? Can you send vouchers to people? And uh, we think that's really, really lame. Uh, there must be a better way of, of using this tech because people will perceive it as spam and probably switch it off really quickly. Uh, this is one of my favorite tweets uh, about the Region Street app. I'm um, not sure if you tried it uh, uh, at all, uh, but Region Street has an app and it basically, uh, they're using iBeacons in the stores and every 10 meters it spams you with uh, an offer like that um, uh, on your phone. And the comments on it was uh, from a chap named Jeffrey Baraclaw saying, seriously, I walk into my local for a pint and the Regent Street app sends me this. I beacon fail, context is everything. And we can't agree more, unless of course Regent Street knows a bit more about Jeffrey's hobbies. Um, but it's probably not pink stilettos. So we, we, we sort of shied away from that and uh, we, uh, we got into the JLab uh, competition with John Lewis and, and actually they gave us a fantastic stat. And they say, our customers spend about three times more if they shop online and offline. So these are their omnichannel customers. Uh, it's basically their top segment and biggest revenue generating customer segment. And they asked us, can you, look, can you do something with them? Can you remove friction away from them uh, rather than actually uh, spamming them with offers because that's not really what our brand is. And uh, we started looking into this and, and, and actually, yeah, we can probably do something really cool with Click Collect for you. So what we're doing with uh, John Lewis at the moment, uh, we, uh, we, have, uh, we are on a second trial. We did a trial in Peter Jones earlier this year uh, using iBeacons and an app, a Click and Collect app on the phone that basically when you pollute an order in for John Lewis and you come close to the store about 70 meters outside, we actually bring the John Lewis app to life and we ask you, hey, welcome back to Peter Jones or John Lewis. Do you want to pick up your order? So this is still happening when you're outside. You swipe the message and you say, yes, I, I do. And what happens actually, it goes straight to the guys in the basement who have those devices on the right-hand side who basically get buzzed and say, hey, we have Anna outside the store and she wants this parcel, so we better get it up to her. So uh, she is there when she gets to the desk. So we're removing a lot of waiting time and friction uh, from, the, uh, from the consumer's point of view. Um, the side effect is actually also for John Lewis, it's, uh, it introduces a lot of operational efficiencies for them as well, because they don't have to have their collection that's manned or staffed by all these people at the same time, and they can actually roam around the store because their handheld will go off when you're actually outside and say, hey, I want my parcel now. So it actually works on both ends. Um, this has also been live in Woolworths. Um, actually, for John Lewis, if you want to test it out, uh, we're live in Brent Cross in Croydon uh, at the moment, so uh, go have a look if you want to uh, give it a good go. Um, we tested it earlier uh, this year. Uh, actually, this is live in uh, Woolworths in Australia as well, not to be confused with the Woolworths that is bankrupt here in the UK. Um, and uh, their stats were 30% 30 30 more efficient um, uh, for, my, for my employee deployments because they have uh, almost a third FTE back uh, rather than uh, having these people at the desk the whole time. 35% cheaper because we're using similar consumer devices rather than the very expensive Motorola high-end uh, stuff. We're using normal phones like you have in your pockets. 50% uh, faster uh, from a pickup point of view, 15 minutes to seven minutes, and a lot more happier customers. Um, 
apart from using our platform to track people and, and trigger things with people, we can also track things. Um, we're working with a large transport provider in Australia called Tool, and we're helping them to track their, uh, their trailers. Um, you would not believe it, but they have 27,000 of them, and they lose trailers sometimes. They want to know where it is on their yard, so we actually help them keep track of it and, and, and tell the drivers where it is. Again, saving a lot of time, but it's underpinned by the same platform that, uh, that we use for, for the click and collect cases. These are our customers. Um, if your logo is not on this slide, I want to talk to you. So come see me. Uh, I want to spend a bit of time with you and tell you about what we do. Uh, but yeah, we're working with, uh, with John Lewis, obviously. Uh, Woolworths in Australia, Toll. DPD, soon to be released. It's going to be really cool, so watch that space. And uh, we're going live in Boots as well in, uh, in a few weeks' time uh, with, uh, with Click and Collect. What I just want to show you now is uh, one quick video uh, that we shot at Woolworths, and it actually describes a bit more use cases that we did for our tech. Uh, Woolies basically uh, asked us, and I'll talk over it while this plays actually. In Double Bay, one of the fanciest stores, Woolworths asked, go nuts with your tech on what we have and show us what you can do. So this shows you actually approaching the store, and we opened the, the Woolworths app uh, based on you arriving there. You slide it open from the lock screen, and uh, it, uh, it launches the app straight away, so you don't have to search for it. What we're doing there, we're showing a few offers that are linked to your, uh, your Everyday Rewards card, which is their, their loyalty card, which is already pre-generated, but we just show it uh, from the app. That's not the real use case, because you can trigger these things when you walk down the aisle, but we haven't done that very much over there. Um, it's just to um, um, welcome you to the store when you get in. But they've got a cheese room, which is packed with really cool cheeses. And the, the problem that I run into is that they wanted to show more information about the cheeses um, because there's a big Jewish population uh, in the area where we have gone live. So they want to know, does it have rennet and, and those sort of things. So what we do is we open the app when you come into the store and, and alert you. And what we allow you to do is use the same technology that we use for proximity messaging uh, to really close by uh, obtain content from, uh, from the cheeses. So what we actually do is you can hold your phone to the cheeses and it actually shows you what it's about, uh, who made it, what wine goes with it, and you can rate it and, and do all sorts of things like that as well. So it's very much a, a pool engagement rather than pushing ads to someone. Then what we've done is the checkout. So we also integrated with a POS system. And um, what this allows you to do is, um, this goes really quickly, it's not very eventful, but what has happened there is actually it, it pushed all the loyalty information to the till. So you can apply loyalty numbers straight away uh, when a customer is near you at the till. The guy's a bit freaked out because we didn't tell him that we were doing this um, uh, when the loyalty information showed up. But it saves, again, friction. It saves time for you to take out your wallet and, and, and scan your cards. The last thing what we've done is we, we have done a little bit of a promotional thing, which is a cross-band promotion. So in Australia, booze is sold, uh, sold uh, separately in a store next door by, called Dan Murphy's. So what we actually do is we do trigger a bit of an, uh, uh, an ad in this case. Uh, phone wakes up uh, with, with an offer that matches uh, the cheese you just bought and checked out uh, next door. Again, it's quite a, it's quite a, a distant case. Um, we're not a huge fan of it because you want to make sure you get it right, but it was more of a technology thing that we wanted to show that actually works. That's it, really. Um, that's what, uh, what Locals does. Um, and uh, yeah, any questions? Thank you very much. Martin? I have a question. I'm not going to wait for these guys to tell you theirs. Um, I need more beer. So medium-term innovation technology within the retail space, such as facial recognition, to a certain extent, artificial intelligence. How is that going to impact on things like this? Make it better, make it redundant. It will make me freak. It will freak me out, to be honest. Um, I, uh, I'm not a firm believer in biometrics and so on because it's very hard to remove your face when someone compromises it. Um, so it's it's a bit of a security legacy I've inherited from my previous job. Um, Will it replace things? I don't know. Uh, what we would like to do is we want you to be in control of it rather than things happening while you're not, you're not aware of it. So everything that we do is with consent, and, uh, and, and I think that's the way it's going to go. It will probably be leveraged to make things easier, but probably not cross the creepy border. Thank you. Any further questions from the audience? Rolf? No, we did them as standalone apps. Uh, we did them as standalone apps. Uh, idea being that it will be integrated with their, their app through our SDK, basically. So we'll be going live with Boots in the next few weeks, and that also will be a separate click and collect app. So sole purpose is to really click and collect, whilst the, the, the app teams are working out how to slot this into their release plan. Okay, sorry, so that's installed as an app in the device? Yeah, it's a separate app uh, at the moment. Yeah, but the intent is to actually have it in the main, the main app. Integrate with the main yeah, app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But when you're doing the, the trials, you don't want to disrupt the, the big app too much, and the app teams get a bit nervous about it. So, yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Actually, on, on that thing, is, I mean, the, we, we're using proximity in the beacons just to trigger that case. There's also still a kiosk and a normal manual check-in as well uh, that powers the same experience. So it's just for us another channel to make life easier. So it's not the sole way. You, you can still use it without having the app as well. Martin from Locals, thank you very much. So, on to our third pitch, and we welcome to the front Naomi Poiser from Greenseed. Welcome her. You can clap, it's fine. Just sitting there, and we are the co founders of Greenseed. So, we have a crisis. On one hand, we're seeing great advancements in technology, cities are becoming more built up and more populated, sorry. But on, at the same time, we're seeing high rates of depression, anxiety, people are becoming more dissatisfied with their lives. These two things are not coincidental, they actually one causes the other. So, the reason why people are becoming more dissatisfied, more anxious, more depressed is because they're becoming less connected with nature and less connected with each other. So with Greenseed, we have a perfect solution for this. We are using technology to bring people closer to nature and at the same time closer to each other. So we can, it's clear to see that people do want this reconnection from the fact that Amazon have reported ten, a 10 times increase in sales in indoor allotment, indoor allotment sets in London in just the past year. The outdoor and gardening industry is worth almost $200 billion worldwide. That's three times the size of the global music industry. So there's a pretty big opportunity here. We're starting in London. It's obviously where we're based. It's also a huge metropolitan city. It's getting more and more populated every day, and it's already very densely populated as it is. But it's also a city where most people are not connected with their community or with nature. It's the birthplace of guerrilla gardening, so we can see trends in the way that people are trying to get reconnected with nature and trying to make the city more green. And the government as well is pumping a lot of money into gardening, which we can see with initiatives such as the Garden Bridge. So we are creating an app which you can see who's gardening around you in a map. You can get information about the best, way to, the best way to plant things, the best way to grow things, and it will even give you suggestions of what you can grow in that month. You can ask questions, you can log and share your gardening experiences with people in your community, and you can get inspiration from people around you in a trusted network. We're the only thing like this on the market right now, and we're the only thing that brings together the knowledge of books, the online accessibility of apps, blogs, and forums, together with the community connection of your actual local community. We put this, we put this all together into one simple platform with exceptional user experience, and we even have a marketplace in app, an in, in, in app marketplace where you can swap and trade to seeds, tools, plants, and even garden services. We have a simple business model, which is we just take a 5% transaction fee from the marketplace. This is pretty reasonable when you compare it to Amazon and eBay, which take 10%. But even with this 5% transaction fee, you can see it's a very lucrative business. After three years of us launching the app, we will have 5 million customers, which is actually very reasonable when you consider that one in three people in the UK garden, and we're not just targeting existing gardeners, we're trying to get more people into gardening as well. With 5 million customers, we will have 12.5 million in revenue. This is based on the assumption that everyone will do it 10 transactions in a year. So again, that's pretty conservative because they're probably going to do more than 10 in one year. This is the team. So I'm in charge of business development. I'm the UCL Student Enterprise Ambassador. I'm also the lead organizer of TEDx UCL this year. And I was recently named a future leader. My co-founder, Arindra, he is a master's in computer science. He has extensive experience with user experience. He's a mentor at the Mass Challenge, which is one of the biggest accelerators in the world. And he is an entrepreneur in residence at the startup bootcamp fintech. 
Our mentor, Angela Sadler, has 20 years experience as a business and IP lawyer, and she's a non-executive director of three businesses. To back up our great team, we have some really good traction. We had this idea exactly one year ago, and already we've won all the enterprise competitions at UCL this year. We have over 1,500 people across our social networks. We were in the final of the Global Clean Tech Challenge this year, as well as receiving a scholarship to the Impact Hub Westminster. We have just got through to the final of the European Idea Challenge, which is happening later in this month. And as of today, we've launched on the UCL App Lab, which is UCL's exclusive app store. So what's next for us? We are actively seeking investment, and we are always on the lookout for new partners. We have partnership interest from Whole Foods to sponsor online competitions that we're going to run, and we are going to partner with Capital Growth as well, which will give us a lot of exposure and connections to the gardening industry across London and beyond. If anyone else is interesting, interested in partnership or want to find out more about what we're doing, please come and talk to us after this and we can show you the app as well. Thank you very much and I hope you dig the idea. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, I'm really excited by this uh, for a number of reasons, really. Um, there's a massive trend um, in, in, in urban areas, it's sort of a trend back towards this kind of allotments and people getting yeah. reconnecting with nature, which I think works really nicely. But also a need for local councils to try to create a, these kind of reconnect with communities. And I think there's a real big opportunity for you to connect young with old within those yeah. communities as well, because they know a lot more about gardening than <laughs> us. Uh, and I sadly still group myself in the young camp and I'm not anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I need to change. Um, so uh, that was more an obs observation. Has anyone got any questions for Naomi before we move on? Mr. Burley. What's the success? Well, what's your success been like so far? You've been running for about a year now. Uh, we haven't been running for a year. We had the idea a year ago. And yeah, I mentioned the traction. We've actually just launched today on the UCL app lab. Um, but yeah, we've had some really good traction so far, considering we haven't even launched until today. And so hopefully some very good opportunities with brands, so a great CSR initiative as well for the right types of brands, especially yes, big supermarket grocers, retailers, CSR. places like that. I think yeah, exactly. Great I mentioned we've had partnership interest from Whole Foods, so they're going to be sponsoring online competitions we're doing. We're always on the lookout for other partnership opportunities as well. Any further questions? Was there one at the back, Martin? Because this is a really good way of us testing it and making sure it's right there when we go in the App Store. Any further questions? At the back, Nick. Okay, so it's just any individual can sign up and sell through the marketplace. So say if you've, yeah, so if you've grown some potatoes and you want to share them with people locally or whatever. If that's all, Naomi from Greasy, thank you very much. Thanks. So on to our last presentation. Um, I welcome to the floor Tom Neal from Landmark. Please welcome, thank you very much. Tom, and you might have seen me downstairs enabling people to pour beer with the power of your mind, the strange thoughts, um, but I've come to talk to you today about Landmark. Um, Landmark is a white label platform that we have developed as part of the Strange Thoughts team, um, and here it is. If I can get... How am I clicking? Uh, there we go. So Landmark allows you to place digital content in real time into physical locations around the world. The content is unlocked by entering these locations with our mobile web app. So this is just a web link that you open up and walk into a physical location to unlock content. Um, so what we would do with our platform is give you a login to, to our CMS. So you log in, and then you can create hotspots all around the world, wherever you want, drop the content into those hotspots. Then you send out a link that people can open via your usual channels via your social media channels, via um, banner ads, whatever your methods usually are. 
the user clicks on that, they're taken to a, a map on their phone, and that shows them where they can unlock their closest content piece. Uh, they walk into the hotspot by following the map, and they open the content and enjoy it. Uh, so we first developed this technology with a really big band called Alt-J that I'm sure you've all heard of as big music lovers. Um, and we created an app that enabled their fans to listen to their album for the first time in amazing locations around the world. Um, and we set up 2,000 listening spots in, in, across uh, all the five continents. And um, fans would download the app and walk into those places to listen to their album. And we'd kind of be controlling that experience. So you'll be listening to your band's favorite album, um, your favorite band's album, sorry, in a beautiful location around the world. Um, in our first week, we had 56,000 users, and we were kind of really happy with how that went. So we decided to create that into a platform that would harness that power and give it to brands and other entertainment clients to use. Um, here's an example of some of the press we got from uh, the Alt-J campaign. So it's a really compelling story, a kind of unique way to experience their content and kind of create connections with their fans. We're really happy with how that went. Uh, since then, we've developed this into a white label platform, and our first campaign to go live on the platform was with legendary rocker Keith Richards. Uh, he wanted to unlock four exclusive tracks of, in, in the build-up to the release of his new album, and we set up these hotspots in places that were relevant to Keith's history. Um, so fans, uh, each week a hotspot was opened, and a fan would have to uh, go to the location it was entered, uh, go to the location on the map, sorry, and enter a code that was on the blue plaque related to Keith's history. And that was a really nice campaign that um, was really good and kind of built a pipe built around Keith's rich history as a legendary rock star. Um, there's the mobile experience. So that's the web link that people were taken to. The red spot is where you are currently, and that blue spot is where the hotspot is. It's all on the mobile web, so it's all on the, um, your Safari or your Chrome on whatever handset you've got. And here's when you entered into the hotspot area and the content is unlocked. And there's our lucky Super Keith Richards fan, who would unlock the content for the rest of the Keith Richards fans to listen to. Um, so now we've got this amazing platform. We're looking to speak to people like yourselves and create new opportunities and new kind of experiences for customers and for, and for fans. Um, the platform can be used as a con content distribution channel. So like Alt-J did, they had this amazing new album. They wanted to drop it in amazing locations around the world for fans to enjoy. You could use this for simplistic competition mechanism. You drop competition prizes in physical locations all around the world, send out a link, and then you've created a competition for your fans to be first to this location to uh, win the prize or win the free product, whatever you want that to be. You could do loyalty rewards by visiting a number of these different locations. So you could set up these in retail, retail environments, or that could be venues for a music client, and you could go to these places and be uh, rewarded for your loyalty with money off or whatever you want the reward to be. Um, one we really like is heritage tours. So if you've got a brand with a uh, rich kind of history and a, a rich story, you can create um, a heritage tour for them. So an example of this would be for, for Beatles in Liverpool. So they've got lots of different amazing existing content, and you could direct people around different parts of Liverpool that are relevant to the band kind of uh, forming and existing as the biggest brand around. So you could have a handwritten lyric in a cafe by John Lennon. You could have a video of their first gig at the Cavern Club, whatever that might be. Um, one thing we're really looking to do as well is if you've got a content piece that's really exciting, for instance, the new Star Wars trailer, you could release that to a few people first by um, making sure, uh, by attracting as many people to one location as possible. You could set up hotspots in different cities around the world and the most loyal city would get to see the trailer first or unlock the trailer for everyone else to enjoy. We really like the platform because it creates unique conversations between brands and customers or bands and fans as we've used it before. And you're directly speaking to people in these locations that are close to where they live. Uh, and you can create these really nice conversations. And we're looking to speak to more people about how we can harness the power of the platform to create these really localized um, conversations with customers but that is essentially what Landmark is, so thank you. Again, another really interesting piece of tech. Um, I think it's really interesting for brands with rich and local heritage. 
Um, I was in Amsterdam recently, so could there be a Heineken tour around Amsterdam if there's multiple oh, okay. locations? Um, or a, a, a brand experience uh, that, 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 that guided you around specific experiences to, un to understand various attributes of the brand. But again, really interesting. My question to you, Tom, is um, why hasn't this happened before? Why haven't you done this five years ago? Um, personally, well, this came as an idea for us when we spoke to, uh, spoke to Alt-J and they wanted to create these listening spots that were attached to physical items. They wanted people to plug in their headphones to a physical uh, chair in this beautiful location. And for us, this idea of harnessing, like creating a digital platform where you could do this using new technologies and, and using your mobile, that idea came to us then. Um, so that's why we didn't do it anytime sooner, but we're excited to be doing it right now, I guess. And Has there, have there been recent evolutions in the, in the technology that enables this happening? I think it's like the strength of the smartphone and uh, what, you, what the different smartphone developers allow you to do. So the strength of technology, uh, 4G signal allows you to access content quicker and for your phone to react quicker to your GPS location as well. So this, the quicker that their technology develops, the better our technology will react to that and you'll be able to put in enriched experiences around that. Like for instance, Safari are planning to put push notifications uh, around their kind of experience. So we'll be able to send uh, geolocation push notifications to people saying, there's a new Alt-J track in this park close to your house. You can listen to it here, for instance. So yeah, the tech's kind of leading what we're doing with that. Fantastic. Any further questions from the floor? Rolf again. Gold star, by the way. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so it will use your mobile data, essentially, is what it is, yeah. But it's just a one link. So we've set up to be a mobile web app, so you just click the link that you'll see on Facebook on your phone, and you'll be taken to that um, experience for whatever brand or whatever, whatever you want to do. You don't need, you, you could develop it as a native app if you wanted to do it that way, but the person would have to download that. But you could just do it through Weblink as well, a mobile web app. So it's just clicking on a link that you would see on Facebook. I would open up your Safari or your Google Chrome, and you'll be in the experience. Thank you. Tom from Landmark, thank you very much. You. So just a final thank you to Gideon, Martin, Naomi, and Tom again. Uh, four fantastic startups to come and have a chat with now. They'll be sticking around, I'm sure. Um, there are drinks, there are nibbles. Um, there's a fantastic influence session happening uh, in a short while, I think in an hour that kicks off. Um, and the question they'll, uh, they're wrestling with is, can technology solve the problems created by technology? We've got an all-star panel uh, that will be hosted by Chris Buckley, our chief digital officer. Hi. At the back. Um, you've got Diane Perlman, who's the global CMO at Mass Challenge, will be sitting on the panel. Charlotte um, McLenny, from, who's a digital editor at Marketing Magazine. Um, Connor Maron, who's a digital optimization manager at Virgin Trains East Coast. And I think the East Coast apparently is really important. They're not friends. Um, and uh, Mark Curtis, our friendly and um, hairy now, um, head of labs. So come have a drink, have some nibbles, have a chat with the, um, the entrepreneurs, and stick around for the influence session. Thank you very much. <laughs>